Randy, did you think the goal late in the first helped uh, turn things around and get the momentum going the other way? Yeah, I, I think, again, uh, we were kind of stunned by the first first shot on goal was in their, our net, and it kind of set us back a little bit. We weren't really moving our feet, and we seemed to find a way to get it going. And, you know, we had some performances from some individuals that, you know, offensively, Nazi w was a difference maker tonight, you know. It's probably the best game he's played in, in uh, a long time, and he was at both ends of the rink, and obviously with the points and, you know, the distributing the puck, that was making some big league plays. What did you tell the team after the first period, considering the slow start they had, and considering how fast you guys came out this time? Well, it was a one-goal hockey game, and we felt that we, we made some mistakes that uh, uh, cost us two goals, and those were easily correctable. That uh, if we continued to, uh, to build on what we'd finished with in the first period, that we could find a way to get ourselves back in the game, because it's a one-goal game. And uh, we believe that with our group that we're, in, we're not out of it when it's a one goal game and, and we haven't played to the level we're capable of playing and they felt the same way that mistakes were made and they're correctable and uh, it was time for us to take a different approach. Certainly you were happy with the secondary scoring. Can you talk about the overall contributions from the other lines such as the, well, the I thought, started the game with and yeah, the I, I thought that uh, Mason Raymond was very visible on the ice tonight. Very visible, and that was good to see. And I, you know, I thought Loops, the big shot. You guys have saw that. You know, him score goals from that area. Those are big league shots. You know, Phil was uh, exciting. And you know, when he got the puck, he was challenging their de defense. And you know, again, Franny made a mistake on, on the second goal, but then redeemed himself with a, you know, a rocket that posted in or crossbar in. And those are kind of things that uplift your group and your. From the bench, and everybody was feeling a lot better about themselves. That's for sure. Do you uh, plan to keep those two deep pairs together now, Reid, or do you go back to Jason Morgan, or what do you think? Well, we've been contemplating doing the splitting the kids up for a while, and we just felt that with Jake and, and Franny having played together last year, and Morgan, uh, you know, with his feet well underneath him as far as his first season, that it wasn't there wasn't a tremendous amount of risk. We just felt that that would be it. A look that we would like to try, not to say that it's cast in stone. I think that those guys can expect that they're going to see some time together, but I guess you can, they can expect to see some time apart too. Can you understand what the uh, well, obviously do, but the um, the influence the guy that Gleason can have on, on Riley? Right? Yeah, I, I think again, it's a, a, a different type of makeup of a defenseman. He's a you know, Gleason has been a guy that's come in and been a heart and soul guy for us, blocking shots, physical, hard to play against. You know all those things, that, and that's his game, and we, we don't want to expect him to do anything more. And that should give Morgan a little bit more freedom, knowing that that type of player is back there. You know, I don't think you're going to have to worry about Timmy Gleason leading too many rushes. Whereas with his partner with Jake, you know, sometimes it's a two-horse race to who's going to be the first one up the ice. You know. Is it kind of trying as a coach? You got two really talented kids like Riley and Gardner. You go through the first period, you see them make some mistakes, and then I don't know. You the, make the a switch, shuffle, and yeah, yeah and the switch the last kind two of. Periods, you see all yeah, I, I, you see that the, we see that every day, so we've kind of become immune to it. When you see them stand out and some of the things that they can do day to day on the ice, and the biggest asset they have is their skating ability. And when you see them pick the puck up and skate the puck out of the zone and move the puck effectively, you always just marvel. But then you kind of get, uh, I don't know, worn out by it because you just see it and well, that becomes normal, becomes the norm. But when they separate themselves in the game, I think it has a, a confidence boost, not only that for them, but for our hockey club. Now we have some young players here that are just getting you know, their feet underneath them as far as NHL careers, and we're always at this level, and it's not a development league. You're here to win, and when you don't win, you know that there's a lot of pressure that comes with it. So it, it's you got to always weigh the two. And we think that we want to protect our young players as much as we possibly can, and try not to put them in situations they can't possibly have success in. And we think that it's better to protect them versus throwing them out there to the wolves. The amount of wins that you've been able to put together here in the last two weeks, has that freed guys up a little bit more, relieved some of the pressure that you've mentioned before had been building earlier in the month? Or? Yeah, I, I think, again, it, it's uh, winning is 
alleviates a lot of stress on a lot of people. But again, we know what's coming now. That when's, what's the next important game? The, the most important game is coming Saturday. So enjoy the win for today. Start your preparation mentally, you know, tonight, and you know, to carry that through because the next one is the most important one. We're playing teams that are right around us. They're division rivals. They're uh, Ontario rivals. The matchup, all those things. And we know how important the points are. And they're only going to get that more, much more important as we go game to game. And everybody's trying to get through to the break to get as many points as you possibly can to give yourself the best chance to set up a run after the Olympic break is over. Considering how well the team's been playing lately, you feel like the break's coming at a bit of a bad time, considering the momentum's going in your team's favor so well? No, I never really thought of it that way. I honestly have it. But those are the things you evaluate after. Yeah, you know, you, you you want to play every second day when your team's playing well and humming along. But like you can't control the schedule. Like when we were playing LA, Chicago, San Jose, and we were in the doldrums of, you know, not playing well and maybe some of the teams we were playing against were you know, were, were top level teams and we played well in some of the games and still didn't win. That was the frustrating part. So now, you know, we still have to focus on what we do. And it's important that we play our style of hockey. And we're a skating hockey club, and we have to be on the puck. We have to be strong forechecking. And that's what our, our team makeup is. What do you think of uh, Kuhlman's offensive game? I think that there's been a fit with Cooley. It seems like Cooley's a better right winger. Lopel's a better left winger, which is kind of mind-boggling at times. One's a right shot, one's a left shot. but. That's where the, the, they fit, and we played them there last year, and they played very well together, and it seems like it has revived a little bit of spark in all three of them. And it's good for them because it's their, they're the guys that are going out there, they're doing it, they're taking on that responsibility, and they're delivering secondary scoring for us. And, you know, that makes us a dangerous hockey club. Yeah, again, you know, it's been kicked around quite a bit here for a while, and we've been scratching our heads on why it's gone that way. And if we can continue to, you know, start with the puck and clear it down, get face-offs, get more people blocking shots, be stronger on, on the puck in areas that we believe that we have the personnel that can, you know, bring this penalty killing to a respectable number versus where it is now.